On December 8, 1861, the Ebenezer Dodge of New Bradford, a whaler on the way to the Pacific, encountered the CSS Sumter just about two weeks into her journey. It was a foggy day, and the two ships almost missed each other. With the ship leaking, the commander of the CSS Sumter decided to burn the vessel and take the about 20 man prisoners until the next port of call. Despite its issues, the burning of the Ebenezer Dodge was a loss of $30,000 to $40,000 for the owner. It was the first of dozens of whalers that would fall victim to rebel raiders in the next four years, most of them in the Northern Pacific after the war had ended. The whaling business was still a big money maker for business and ship owners in New England by the 1860s. Whaling accounted for about 5% of the GDP of the United States in the early to mid 1800s. By 1846, the US was home to 735 out of the 900 whaling vessels in the world. And in 1845, the industry had procured 18 million gallons of whale oil. Whale oil was more popular than lard oil or coal oil because the alternatives odor and low quality. Low prices and reliable supplies had supported the use of whale oil for decades. The whalers indiscriminately slaughtered thousands of whales, bringing the whale population almost to extinction. In 1853, alone, they killed about 8,000 whales. But the genocide, as some have called it, diminished the whale population, raising the prices from 63 cents per half gallon of whale oil in 1843 to $1.92 per half gallon in 1854. Whaling still remained profitable until the end of the century, by which point the US-based whaling fleet had greatly diminished in size. Since whaling was a difficult and long-running undertaking, some of the whaling ships by the mid-19th century showed their age. Because the US Navy had insufficient vessels to fully blockade rebel ports, the Navy searched for other ways to implement the blockade. By November 1861, 16 old whalers sailed for Charleston Harbor, where the US Navy sank some in the main shipping channel. Later in January 1862, another 10 whalers sailed for Charleston Harbor. The sunken hulls became known as the Stone Fleet, which caused quite a diplomatic stir. New Bradford recovered from the shock of the Sumter sinking Ebenezer Dodge and the Sumter's journey was short when the US Navy cornered the ship in Gibraltar and started a whole new story in the ship's history. But it did not involve hunting US merchant ships or whalers. After the Sumter, the rebel purchasing agent in Europe, James Dunwoody Bullock, 
soon had another set of vessels on the oceans, avoiding British neutrality laws as they departed. He was able to famously get the CSS Alabama out of Great Britain before the British government could detain the vessel, and also the CSS Shenandoah. Both of these ships would wreak havoc on the US whaling vessels. While most of the US whaling activities took place in the North Pacific, there was also a substantial whaling fleet in the Atlantic, and they soon discovered the arrival of the CSS Alabama, which from its outfitting port in the Azores could quickly strike a blow against the whalers. The future Alabama had escaped the Mersey River on July 29, 1862. August and September were feeding frenzies for whales off the Azores, as massive amounts of krill arrived in the region. With the whales came whalers, the perfect storm. Raphael Sams and the Alabama only had to depart port and could find US flicked ships in great abundance, and by October, 11 whalers had fallen victim to the new rebel threat. Once Sams and the Alabama departed at the Azores and focused on the merchant fleet of the United States, whalers became less of a target, but they could still fall victim, and occasionally a whaler was unlucky to run into the Alabama on its way to or from the whaling grounds. Even when the Alabama made its way into Asia, the ship did not make it a point to prey on whalers. Also, if you watched the last video on the Russian fleet in San Francisco, the Alabama never even came close to the Pacific coast, and Sams had no intentions of going in that direction. Sams and the Alabama's illustrious journey ended June 19, 1864, when the rebel pirate met its match in the USS Kersage off Cherbourg in France. The whaling business suffered greatly from another one of the rebel pirates, the CSS Shenandoah. Originally designed as a cargo ship and troop transported between Asia and Europe, Bullock obtained the ship in October 1864 and renamed it Shenandoah. Commanded by James Waddell, the ship went on an extensive journey to strike areas previously untouched by rebel raiders. On, on December 4, 1864, in the South Atlantic, Shenandoah caught the Edward out of New Bradford, their first whaler. Once Shenandoah made its way into the Pacific, the attack on the whalers began. Waddell found its next targets at Ascension Island in modern-day Micronesia, where he cornered four whalers. The ships were valuable, but the information contained even more, as Vidal gained access to maps and charts of U.S. whaling activities in the Pacific. While he had received the key to undo the whalers, there was also a warning going out of his arrival in the Pacific putting whalers in the Arctic on higher alert. As a result, Waddell only captured 24 more whalers between May and June 1865. Yes, that's right. Waddell's rebel warship destroyed U.S. whalers after the official end of the war in Virginia. An excellent illustration of the slow movement of news during that period. Waddell did not hear of the end of the war until August 3rd, 1865, and did not surrender, quote-unquote, until November 1865, the last rebel to give up. First of all, as this episode grew out of last episode's claim that San Francisco may be targeted by rebel raiders, the material here should put that squarely to rest, as no raider was close to San Francisco in the fall of 1863. In 1865, rebel activities in the Pacific peaked, when it really made little difference. However, the material as well as psychological impact of rebel raiders on US whaling interests 
was great and left a serious dent in Massachusetts whaling community. Thank you for watching this episode of the Wharf's Rebellion channel. If you liked the material covered, please like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell for new episodes. If there's a story of the Wharf's Rebellion you would like covered, please leave a comment. Use the comments to engage in conversations. Thank you for patronizing the Wars Rebellion channel.